What's up everybody, this is Gray here. And today we're gonna look at medical preparedness. And what I mean by medical preparedness is specifically a company by name of Poly Medical reached out to me uh, and asked me uh, if I could review one of their products. So I'm basically gonna unbox the product, show you what you have in it, and show you the proper application, at least from my perspective. Uh, a lot of people do different, do different things differently. Uh, I'm gonna show you my way and the way I was taught uh, on how to use a skin stapler specifically this kit right here uh, this kit does have a lot of different things that you can do with it uh, in this kit you have uh, one sterilized skin stapler with 55 preloaded wires one sterilized staple removal tool uh, one sterilized large plastic forcep and one sterilized medium plastic forcep they also decided to send me this little kit here you can see this here basically this kit is going to be more of a uh, I want to say surgical forcep kind of kit. It has a couple of things in here, uh, you know, like your blades for your scalpels and whatnot. And there's a lot of different type of scalpel blades. We're not going to dive too deep into that, um, but I figured I would mention it that they do offer stuff like this as well. Uh, and some of the important things in here is like, you know, like your forceps and stuff like that and some other various equipment inside here that could be possibly useful to you. A lot of times you'll see these products on, let's say, uh, Amazon or whatnot and uh, they'll be more of so of a dissection or something like that. Uh, but these are somewhat like surgical or medical kits, uh, you know, tools per se, uh, that you can use for emergency preparedness if you know how. And uh, matter of fact, uh, I've, I've showed you guys a book that's very dear to me, and uh, I will uh, show it to you again. Uh, I'll throw it up right now so that you guys can see the book I'm talking about. Uh, and this is the book that I would suggest uh, if you're just getting into uh, medical preparedness, this might be the book for you. All right, so that being said, um, let's go ahead and get a close-up. I'm also going to be using a, uh, a fake skin applicator to kind of show you how I do this. Now, for the purpose of this video, though, uh, I want you to think of one thing. Uh, one, you're going to be one, you're gonna, whenever you have a laceration or something like to that extent, a cut or something like that, there you're going to suture or use a stapler on there's a couple things that you need to be aware of and to make sure that when you uh you're when you're going to address a wound that you have gloves on that the wound is clean and irrigated you know you don't want to uh you know you probably want to you know wear something to protect yourself and your patient uh, that you're doing unless it's yourself but i would still try to be protective um you can use things like alcohol swabs uh whatever kind of thing that you want to do you kind of want to slow down that uh, bleeding depending on how deep the laceration is there's all different types of things that are going to happen that you're going to have to address this is just a basic understanding of a skin stapler now the main difference between sutures and skin staplers is sutures are uh, take a little bit more uh, of understanding and know how how to use them uh, where a stapler can come in very handy is in the aspect of it's easy to deploy it's easy to use even for a novice with basic education when it comes to using that stapler um, one key point with this is with the staplers, if you're going to use it, uh, you, you kind of want to, um, because staplers have a tendency possibly, depending on the way you apply them, to leave a lot more scarring. So, you know, if it's down there by the legs or somewhere where most people are not going to see, maybe the back or whatnot, but if it's something like a, uh, you know, let's say a head laceration or a face laceration, uh, what else, you know, let's say hands, uh, neck, places like that. You might want to, you know, probably use sutures, but I can see how, you know, a stapler in itself can come in very handy in emergency preparedness because, again, as I've told many of you folks in a situation like here in Florida, when there's a hurricane present and your windows break or your roof comes and collapses and one of your folks get lacerated, if the storm is ongoing, being that the winds are 35 miles or higher, uh, you can call 911, but they are not going to make it to your location uh, due to the wind. Uh, until the wind dies down so you need to be your own medic you need to be your own provider for medical uh, procedures and whatnot so being well versed in stuff like this is to me very important all right so enough of me rambling on i'm going to get a close-up of what i'm doing and explain to you in that process the way i'm doing it and hopefully this will benefit you uh, if you decide to purchase uh, something like this now i will put down uh poly medicals uh you know complete disposable uh skin stapler down there the kit uh, I will put their other kit down there. And for you folks that might want to practice, I'll put a link down to here below to some of this fake skin. Uh, and what I like about it is it has various laser, you know, it has your basic epidermis and then your lower fatty tissues and stuff like that. So it's really good to work on something like this. Uh, and they're very affordable. I'll put all those links down below. 
in the description if you care to either purchase some of this stuff or you know you want to learn because the thing is it's to train now before an emergency situation arises and then you just have this stuff laying around let's say in your pack or your first aid kit or wherever you might have it uh, and then you're, you're unprepared in the aspect that you've never used it before. So this gives you an option to uh, apply these skills and practice these skills and kind of just get a lot better at it. Even though the skin, sca skin stapler and remover uh, is quite easy to use, but you want to know a little bit about what you're doing. All right, so let's go ahead and, and reposition the camera and get a close-up look of what I'm going to do. And I'll explain the steps that I'm doing. And hopefully, again, that'll be beneficial to you. All right, see you guys in just a second. All right, so first what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open this box up. Uh, and basically see what you have in it. And like I said, everything's going to come basically sterilized already. So that's what you get in the box there. Like I said, this is kind of breaks it all down in here, what you got. And uh, like I said, again, this is from Poly Medical. I'm going to move this to the side to kind of give you guys an idea of what we have here on the counter. And basically, these are going to be your large forceps here. Your small forceps here, and I'll show you how they're used. This is going to be your skin stapler remover. Uh, and like I said, everything you want to keep sterile. If for some reason you open this up and you plan on using it again, of course you want to re-sterilize this equipment before use. Just like the stapler here is also sealed in a sterile environment, as you can see here. And luckily, like I said, a lot of this stuff will show you how to use it on the back. Uh, but I figure sometimes just having that close-up view of what's going on might help. Now, I'm going to do... You can do it this way. I'm going to do a little bit of something different because I'm going to show you what works for me. Uh, this is which will entail wearing gloves. Now remember, this is just a demonstration. This is, uh, you know, you want to make sure that whatever you're working on, be it if you're working on a wound of whatever size, specifically we're going to be focusing on this right here. We're going to be focusing on a wound like this. Uh, you want to, of course, clean the wound and make sure that your hands itself is clean and sterilized before you start to engage in a process like this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open everything up, and then I'm going to get a different angle to kind of show you guys how I'm using the stapler and what I use and how I do it. All right. Okay, folks, so I got it real close because I want to show you guys a couple of things on the front of this stapler. That is the center point, okay? So this is the center point of that stapler because you kind of, when you're doing your suturing up a wound, you kind of want to stay center with the wound that you're sealing okay and like I said a lot of people will use this and they'll try to use these to squeeze in this you know like a like a wound or whatnot me I, I use differently I, I like to use my fingers just because I have more control of the wound and uh, it's a little bit different trying to show you from this angle I might flip the camera around but I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control that wound by going that way I'm trying to find a better way to show you guys with my fingers and yes my fingers are dirty because I've been working in the garden but as you can see, when I, when I squeeze my fingers together, when I'm pinching that skin, it's going to give me the, what I want to do is that wound close right there because I want to bring it right about there to close that wound. And in that process, I'm going to have my stapler right there dead center. So let me see if I can spin this around and give you guys a better angle of what I'm trying to do here and then go ahead and, and staple this wound closed. Okay, folks. So I was going to try it the other way, but it's not going to work that way. It's easier for me to try to squeeze from here and show you from this angle. So basically, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to squeeze the skin together here, right? But you see, I want to put my line right there and then just slightly squeeze. As you can see, that's going to put my first staple right there and you're going to see that I've got where I want to start. So now you can move down through this and follow that line there and just kind of go right down there. And I'm gonna, I can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm trying to go about a quarter inch each step of the way okay and you can see where I'm lining up the stapler as I'm coming down on the wound right towards the end as you can see I'm relatively straight um, you know trying to do this on camera is not the best idea but basically I'm going to continue to go videos. down that wound because you don't want to apply too much pressure you want to see see how there's gapping in between there again I want to line this up about a quarter inch and then hit that stapler until I get that whole line. Now, I know it might be hard for you to see, but it, it's actually relatively pretty straight. Now, what I want you to see is see how there's, see how there's those, uh, there's about a gap right there. I don't know if you guys can see that on the screen, but you, cause that's basically, you don't wanna go too deep. You don't wanna apply too much pressure on that. I didn't do too bad for being on camera. I went a little haywire over here and whatnot, but as you can see, it's relatively straight. 
that you want to shoot for that as best as possible. Um, and also, once you're done with this, of course, then at this point, you want to make sure that you dress the wound. You know what I mean? If you want to, you know, put it, you know, if you want to clean up anything, any residual, any blood, or any of that kind of stuff like that that might be there, uh, and clean this wound up and then dress it appropriately. Now, that being said, let me come back to me before we show you how to remove the staples. Okay, so folks, removing the staples is just as simple. Now, a lot of you, some people are going to want to just like, you know, try to rip these out. You don't want to do that because I'm going to show you between a closed staple and uh, and an open staple. So let me see if I can stick this here for you to see. And let me get another one here to show you when you use the staple or remover, you're going to be able to see this here. If I can stick that there. So if I'm going to point this out to you, this is the way the staple itself closes the skin and this is what the staple remover does it opens it up because you don't want to be pulling on these staples okay you don't want to pull it because if you see if you see it when it closes it's going to yank on the wound and you're probably going to create more of an issue than a resolution uh, so please don't go use your multi-tool and try to get these things out have something that's appropriate like the staple remover if you notice the the tip on there you can see it's a specialized tip on there you can see how it kind of grabs it. I don't know how good the camera's doing on that, but it looks good from my end. But you can see it's specialized. It's going to squeeze that, and then you're going to get that out of there. So let's go ahead and remove these staples. So you're going to slightly go under, and you don't want to apply too much pressure, folks. This is very simple. And I'm trying to get my angle on my camera, and then we're going to just move through. And it's just going to easily pull on that. Now, you don't want to pull hard on it. You want to kind of let it go out by itself. I'm going to just set this here. And then kind of go eat through each one, just underneath it. That's why you leave that gap. And then slowly pull. Because you don't want to re you know, you don't want to re, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't want to uh, agitate the skin there. But this is a very simple process. They just come right out. And believe it or not, this doesn't hurt. You would believe it doesn't hurt. Uh, I'll show you that it doesn't hurt here in a second. But as you can see there, you know, I'm going through all the staples. And uh, let's, that one's wanna, not want to come out. But this is a very simple process. Very simple, folks. And <laughs> if you do see, and speaking of as I'm watching this happen on my screen here, if you see the wound start to open up, then you might want to re-suture that because it means it hasn't set, if that makes sense to you. Hopefully it does. That's the that, These are the terms that I use. I am not a medical doctor or a nurse or something like that, you know, other than being in the military and, you know, combat medics, we have our ways of doing certain things. But anyways, all in all, you're going to remove all those staples. And then once you're done, you know, removing the staples, like I said, you're just going to, like, again, I, I kind of want to show you this. Let me move these over here. And I know it's an extreme close-up, so it's a little bit weird uh, for some folks. But you see how there's that gap under there. I'm trying to give you guys the best view possible because this is that gap for where you can see that this is going to come through. And then you're going to press, and it's going to release those staples. Hopefully, you guys can see exactly what, it, what the stapler is doing. It's going to press. It's going to release but again if you see the wound start to open up that means it's probably not ready um, and I, I will get some specifics here in a second and how long you should wait for this to happen let's pan back to me and wrap this up all right folks uh, so hopefully those close-ups kind of gave you an idea of uh, of how to use a skin stapler um, it was a little bit challenging using a camera because it's easier if I'm working on a patient for me to just do what I do uh, versus trying to have different angles and trying to not get my hands in the way of a camera per se But hopefully, you know, like I said, I'm not like I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse um, You know, my medical background is being a combat medic in the military um, So we have different ways of doing things but for emergency preparedness or in the medical field of things uh, having something like a skim stap stapler can provide a vital asset to your let's say your go bag or your emergency bag or your IFAC or, or whatever that you have for medical preparedness. Now, some people are gonna ask, well, when do I take the staples out? Well, that, that can depend. On average, it's about seven to 10 days on most lacerations. Um, like I said, this is why you have to take this video uh, and go further with it. You want to educate yourself uh, on stuff like this and procedures like this. Now, again, it's very simple to use, and in a pinch, you know you can you know pull it out but you want to do the best that you can for either if it's on yourself or the patient that you're working on you know being if it's a child some people have been used skin staplers on pets uh if they were to get hurt while there's a certain scenario going on let's say you're hunting in the woods 
and your dog uh, you know gets lacerated on something whatever it may be uh, you can use some something like this uh, a lot of people like myself will carry razors inside my uh, go bags or my emergency kits in case someone is very hairy like myself and I need to shave that spot so I have a good working area to work with outside of all this hair. I don't know if you guys ever had band-aids or used duct tape or other ways to uh, do certain things and then peeling that off can be very painful in itself. Uh, and when it comes to dressing that wound, you, of course you don't want to put anything sticky on that where when you go to peel it off it's going to try to rip those staples out. You don't want anything pulling on that. So uh, just you got to think logically about certain stuff. Uh, again, this video is just to kind of introduce you into the skin stapler and hopefully that you'll go further than just this video uh, and do a little bit more education and research. Um, I know some folks may do things differently the way I'm doing them. Uh, some people, again, will use the tweezers uh, to hold the skin and follow the staple and stuff like that. I'm not a fan uh, of the, the plastic ones. Uh, they do work well on regular skin. You know what I mean? But I, I like the metal ones, medical or metal ones that come in the kit. Uh, the other kit that they sent me, um, I can show you that real quick. I know this video is probably going to run a little bit longer than I expected it to. But these are more of like those medical tweezers there. And I'm not sure, you probably can't see that on camera. But they have a little spot there. I don't know if that you can see that on there that has the little clips there. Right on that part there. But anyways, uh, which can you know help you uh, kind of pull the skin together and whatnot. But I like using my fingers. It's just really easy to use your two fingers. And again, make sure that your hands or if you're using gloves, whatever the situation is, you should always want to be aware that everything needs to be clean. You want to use your antiseptics. You know, like I said, you can use, uh, you want to use a cotton swab uh, with alcohol or if you have an alcohol prep pad, things like that. You don't want to just pour alcohol in there. Some people can use uh, other things like uh, your hydrogen peroxides uh, and other things like that. Even saline solution. Some people like myself will carry bottles of saline solution with them. Uh, for different purposes it could be anything from uh, I, I've used it for eye wash and just irrigating different types of wounds anyways folks I hope that uh, that you learned at least a little bit of something or at least I sparked that interest uh, in a product like this and how beneficial it can be for emergency preparedness uh, and like I said it's quite easy to use um, I guess I, I guess you guys probably want to see gray staple himself and show you that it really doesn't hurt now whoops yeah, that's what you don't want to do is just drop things. But anyways, uh, probably sta staple himself. Now, I am going to take an alcohol prep pad just because I'm out here sweating. And I am going to prep the little area that I'm going to staple on my arm right here. So I'm going to take a little bit of this alcohol here and wipe this down just to kind of sterilize that area. Just in case I do have any bacteria because the last thing I want to do is get a skin infection, right? So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take the stapler and I'm going to staple myself. There it is, folks. You see, I can staple myself right there. And then again, you're gonna come here with this kit, because this is gonna show you that you can do this by yourself. And there is no pain. You might, some people may have a lower pain tolerance. Uh, then you're gonna wanna take that under there and you're gonna squeeze that and remove that staple and a piece of hair. This is why I would shave that. But it's, it's, it, it doesn't bother you, you know what I mean? And uh, like I said, you just want to prep that area to make sure, I'm just gonna take some more alcohol on there to make sure that there's no infection uh, coming from that area on my arm. Uh, because, like I said, you might get some light bleeding, but it's it's right in that top layer of your epidermis and whatnot. Anyways, I hope you got value out of this. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you think someone else can find value out of this, go ahead and share it out to other uh, platforms, other social media platforms that you may have. Let me know down in the comments. Do you think this is something of an asset to have down in your medical go bag uh, or your medical emergency preparedness kit or your IFAC? Where would you keep something like this? Would you have multiples? Uh, if you don't use a skin stapler and if you're really good at sewing, uh, do you use sutures? Uh, where did you learn from? Just, I love to hear back from you, the viewers, uh, and all that kind of information down below. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. This about wraps this video up. And I want to say, as always, be safe out there and know that you're not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys on the rebound. God bless.